Good morning. Good to be with you today as we gather this, the fourth Sunday in Advent, our last Sunday before Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Pleasure to worship with you today as we come together in his name. Uh, take a moment, if you would, uh, raise our hands and uh, wave a little bit to everybody here. Again, good morning to those that are watching us online as well. Let us know you're watching along. It's great to have you with us um, as we worship together this day. Order of service is printed out before you. We'll follow it as it leads us this day. For those of you at home, sometimes we're getting a little delay on our, uh, on our projections, so apologize for that in advance if it happens. Um, but we will follow it as it leads us this day. Opening song, All the World Awaits. Lord's blessings as we worship him this day.
How about you to stand with me as we continue with our invocation, our opening sentences, and our confession and absolution for this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Jeremiah recorded the Lord's promise, I will make a new covenant. Paul reminds his readers, God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. But the, one who goes, goes to the, Lord. the angel told Joseph, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. Joseph called his name that our eyes and our ears may be open to receive the mystery of God's love. Let us first empty ourselves of everything that has closed our hearts to God confessing our sin and our need of forgiveness and life. At the Lord's own invitation and command, I confess all my sins to God, the very thoughts, words, and deeds with which I have offended him and hurt. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Let your light scatter the darkness. We sing.
We continue as we read responsibly the intro for this day from Psalm 19, also a portion from Isaiah 45. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. Rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its light. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Shout, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. Please remain standing as we sing our song of praise, How Many Kings.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the readings appointed for this day. The Old Testament reading for this now, the fourth Sunday in Advent, is from 2 Samuel, chapter 7. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord. Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel? whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies, Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Romans chapter 16. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand with me in honor of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. 
And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated as we continue by singing together the song of the day. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text that serves as the basis for this morning's meditation comes to us from the Gospel lesson read just a few moments ago where we have this incredible scene, the angel Gabriel coming to Mary to, to let her know what is to come. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. So far the words of our text for us this day. The name of Jesus Christ, who was, who is, who is to come, Emmanuel, God with us, even on this day as we prepare for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and the, and the joy to follow, dear friends, friends in his name. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? The answer that is expected is yes. At a marriage ceremony, vows are made and, in a sense, 
promises are made to love and to cherish, to honor sickness and health, for richer, for poorer, until death parts us. I do. Yes, I promise. Those are two promises that are made that are indeed quite serious. And with a little sarcastic tone, I put another one out there as well. The one that sometimes the smaller ones among us like to use, and that is the all-important pinky promise. Do you pinky promise to be my best friend? Do you pinky promise to not tell anyone that I like Tommy or Sarah? Promises, promises. All of us have made them. Probably all of us have received them. And yet, how often are promises broken? I promise I won't miss your game. I promise I'll never say anything to cause you harm. I promise never dot, dot, dot. Or I promise to dot, dot, dot. Parents to children, children to parents, spouses one to another, in our workplace, in our home, promises are all over the place. And yet, so often, unfortunately, some, maybe many, of our promises given or received do not come to fruition or actually occur. Even though Genesis at the beginning of Scripture doesn't say Adam and Eve saying, I promise they were commanded not to eat of the fruit in the center of the garden, the tree of, of life, the tree of good and evil. And yet, as we know from what Scripture teaches, they disobeyed. They didn't, in a sense, keep the promise. And because of that, promises were made and broken through generation after generation. In the Old Testament, we find time after time after time the children of Israel promising to follow their God only to get distracted, to get scared off, to be Interested in other gods or other things? Let's run after this. Let's run after that. And sometimes they're just flat out rebellious. They don't want to do what they promised to do. How they promised to live. How they promised to worship. What a past. It wasn't just then. It continues into the now. We make promises, maybe a lot, and sometimes we do not fulfill the promises that we give. And yet on this day, on the precipice of Christmas Eve, as we approach the manger to once again receive the Christ child, we have this glorious announcement. God is keeping his word. The promises that God made to the children of Israel and even all the way back to Adam and Eve in Genesis 3 is going to be fulfilled. Broken promises everywhere, but not our God. He is sending his son to seek and to save all of us who have broken promises. All of us who are simply broken. 2020 is not just the only year where we've had struggle and strife, where we've made promises and we can't live up to them. Certainly they might be a little different this year because of the circumstances we're in, but we just didn't fall short in 2020. It's been a part of our DNA, like I said, ever since Adam and Eve. We teach, we believe, we confess that we are conceived in sin, original sin. That's a part of who we are. And yet that's not where God wants us to stay. This announcement is only a part 
of God's purpose and plan for you and for me, for past, for present, for future. Oh, you, Mary, you who are highly favored, you will conceive and give birth to a son. You are to name him Jesus. He will be great. He will reign over his forefather, King David. And oh yeah, his kingdom will never end. Now maybe today we could say something like that and people could look at us and go, you can't fulfill that. But again, this isn't me speaking this. This isn't my word speaking this. This is the word of God who has kept every promise. This year and every year, we need to be reminded of the God who continues to keep his promises. This announcement to Mary is what we need to hear once again. Jesus is coming. Nothing is impossible when it comes to God. For if he says it, he will do it. That's what we heard last week in the second lesson. One of my favorite words, our God as being faithful. In the case the people didn't get it, Paul says, and he will surely do it. That word will be spoken soon again as we gather together on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day to celebrate the newborn king. We will sing joy to the world. We will ponder as we sing Silent Night. All the traditions and all the sentiments, we will put those aside as we focus on the one who came for you and for me. The one who came to fulfill God's word. I know many of you have heard it for year after year after year, and yet it's important for us to speak about it again, that which will happen. The virgin will give birth. Her son is the savior of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. That's God's word coming to us again. Even in the midst of a broken world that has many broken promises, our God is coming once again to seek you out, to remind you of who he is and what he has done. And boy, we need what Jesus has to offer even though we're supposed to be in the glow of Christmas, even though we're still in Advent, there are many who are broken. Many who are living in the midst of broken promises. Someone who said they would do something, that they would stay with them, and they're not. Those who are alone right now, who were promised, you'll never be alone, and yet today they are. Jesus has come for those and for us to remind us that he's enough, that his life is enough because his life gives us life. His redemption is life. Mary At the end says, let it be, as you have said. Let it be according to your word. I love the Lord's word. God's word is a comfort in the midst of the chaos and division, in the midst of all the hatred and anger, all the misunderstandings, all of those things. It's a comfort as we can rely upon the one who was, is, and is to come, the one who has given us the promise of life everlasting, the one who has lived the life in our place, the life we couldn't live because we are a broken people, the one who has overcome the grave and as scripture states, 
continues to reign even to today and tomorrow and forever. That's the God that Mary says, let it be as you have said. Let it be according to your word. Who am I? Who are we? Indeed, we're broken people. And yet, Jesus has come to bind up the brokenhearted, to remind us of the hope and the peace and the joy and the love that is ours, all wrapped up in swaddling cloths and laying in a manger. I pray that's our prayer as well as we approach Christmas. Let it be, O Lord, according to your word. Humbly state, let it be, O Lord. For your word is perfect and holy and is always about what's best for me. It's never about hurting or harming, but it's always about bringing me closer to you and to your love. Let it be according to to your word. Let us celebrate what that means in our lives. To bear witness to this word. Again, it's not our word, it's God's word implanted in our hearts so that we might go into the broken world as broken pots. And even if someone says, "Who are you to say to this, to me this because you're broken?" to say, "You bet." But I know the Christ child. I know who he is and what he did. I know that he comes to me this day in his presence. His body and blood given and shed for the forgiveness of sins. We believe it. We let it be according to his word. Because our God never breaks his promises. He always is there for us. So beloved of God, as we approach Christmas Eve and, and Christmas Day, may we do so understanding what God has done. We're talking eternal things here, and we have it because of what the Christ child has done. Oh, come, let us adore him. He is Christ the Lord. May he prepare our hearts and our minds to receive him as he is, trusting fully according to his word. In Jesus' name, amen. May that peace of God which surpasses all our human understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. I invite you to stand with me as we continue proclaiming the gifts of God with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe... Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, as we draw closer to the grand celebration of the incarnation and birth of your beloved Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 
We thank you for making known the mystery of your love from the very first promise to Adam and Eve to the continued witness of the holy prophets, apostles, and evangelists. And finally, through your living voice, through the ministers of your church to this day. Grant that your living word ever call us and all sinners to repentance and faith in your only begotten Son, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Keep all you have called to preach and teach and care for your people in true faith. Guard them against the attacks of the evil one and give them health and joy in their ministry, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Send your spirit over the whole world that those who lead in, in the authority of government Acknowledge your laws and will, making for times of peace, that we may live faithfully in safety. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. By your holy word and sacrament, strengthen us to obedient living. Send your grace, mercy, peace, and love to surround our families. Inspire those of various vocations in the world. Comfort, defend, and heal all those in times of illness or distress. O oh Lord God, we ask your blessings upon Carl and Catherine. Be with Bob, Eunice, Rich, and Nancy. Be with these your servants and also the family of Duane Neitzel. Be with these your people and all those we name before you in our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy. By the mystery of our Lord's incarnation, his life of obedient faith, and his substitutionary death on the cross, establish us in the one true faith, and strengthen us in lives obedient to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I invite you to remain standing as we prepare for the sacrament this morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be our glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated as we continue in preparation for communion this day.
Now may this precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Peace be with you. Amen. We pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Let make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our closing song. Good, good morning to you all. Good to be with you today. Um, you'll note in your uh, calendar, we do not have any more Wednesday Advent services, so we do not have one on Wednesday at noon and 7 o'clock because Christmas Eve, we will have services at 4, 7, and 10, and then also Christmas Day at 9 a.m. So 4 o'clock, family style, 7 o'clock, um, a little more normal, traditional, what we're, 
we're, we're accustomed to over the years. 10 o'clock, a candlelight service with lots of our little carols that we like to sing, and we'll have the place all decked out and dark, and uh, it'll be a nice little setting for that. And then a full-blown, uh, joyous Christmas Day morning here as well. All of those will have communion included, and so um, opportunity, many opportunities to come together and worship. Um, all of them would be live streamed as well, and also we're uh, asking for people to let us know if they'll be here for those services so we can make sure um, that we've got you know, plenty of space and, and all of that as well, so we appreciate that. Uh, a couple other announcements that you have within you already, which you'll be seeing on your way out today. Um, One City thanks us definitely for all the, the clothing and things that were brought in. Thank you for your um, gifts that have come in this week. We had a quick need last week for uh, some assistance with the family, and uh, we had such an abundance getting brought in that uh, we have another individual and family that didn't ask us for anything, but, but has always been some struggles. And so uh, because of your generosity, I'm going to surprise him with one of those gift cards as well. So definitely a need. Um, he's just not one to ask. So, um, so I'm thankful for that for sure. Um, lots of food already gathered to fill some uh, Christmas baskets. So um, if you're coming this afternoon for our three p.m. Lessons and Carols. You can, if you haven't done that, you can go get something, bring it back. Um, with that segue, we're thankful to be able to offer that up this afternoon at three o'clock right here, uh, Service of Lessons and Carols. And again, as you all know, with all the dynamics of the past month or so of not being able to do anything and then try to get the choirs and the, and the bells back together a little bit, um, we're just so blessed to be able to even offer this. We're thankful that in the midst of so many things being limited, that we can do this this afternoon. So um, pray you're here or watching along as, as we do that. Anything else? If not, God bless you as you continue to serve him, as you look forward to the wonderful words once again on Christmas Eve, trusting without a doubt the fullness of God coming in the flesh, keeping God's word. God's peace is with you.